This is Shane Reynolds with JMT here to introduce our new electric press brake, the EcoBend. This particular model is a 5020, 2 meter by 55 metric ton, which is about a 6 foot 10 by 56 US tons. This machine model has about 20 inches of open height and a little over 10.6 inches of stroke with a 16 inch throat depth behind here. Uh, some of the unique characteristics of this machine is obviously it's electric. So it is driven by a servo motor, direct coupled to a ball screw, which controls the ram up and down. This one being a 50 ton is actually two cylinders or uh, two ball screws. Uh, we do go up to 110 ton, which would be four ball screws across the, uh, the ram there. This current machine has sliding front sheet supports, a uh, very nice feature for small projects, small brackets in front of the machine, or move it out for larger pieces to rest on it while you're making those. Also, the clamping. As you can see, these are all quick clamps. Uh, they are American or European. So depending on your tooling, this will accommodate both, and it's just a quick clamp to uh, put it in and take it out. The bottom, obviously, just your standard die rail to put in there. Currently, we have a four-way V die in the machine. You can, either, either way, you can do just about any variation of clamping system, whether you wanted hydraulic specific clamps for American or European. Uh, the hydraulic clamping, like a wheel of setup for upper and lower. Again, a wide range of variations that you can do to this machine. This machine currently has uh, CNC controlled X and R axis. Um, the nice thing about these machines is they, they're all modular. So what that means is currently this has an X and R, but the customer's needs may change uh, in the next six months, two years. Uh, because of that, you may you wish you would have went to a six axis package, which is fully independent uh, fingers, X1, X2, R1, R2, and Z1, Z2. Uh, because of that, that's something that can be done in the field. And the IOs in the control, everything's already been pre-wired, so you can add to that later on. Obviously, the nice feature of that is needs change and you don't have to be stuck with the certain capabilities of the machine today. They can change over time and so the machines can do that with you as you grow and your needs change. Uh, this machine obviously, as you can see, has a safety laser. See it's shooting from that side. This is the receiver. Adjustable depending on your tool height to get it out of the way to move your tools in and out. Sometimes you're going to have larger tools that get in the way. So this gets it out of the way, moves it, keeps it safe to put it back down, pull that lever, and then of course adjusting how height that tool is. And that's what rides right below the bottom of the beam to keep operators safe and their fingers out of the machine. Uh, designed for when you put your material in there, it accounts for uh, where the, the mute point is. The mute point is obviously, or the pinch point, is where the tip of the punch would intersect with the die. So it accounts for when you program your machine, you would tell the material thickness, what you're bending. When you put your piece of material into the machine, the laser is going to, to mute or stop just about three eighths of an inch over the material or less. Typically a quarter is a pretty good uh, rule of thumb where anything that comes in contact between the bottom and the top will actually stop the machine to keep the operator safe. Uh, much more efficient than uh, the old school or some older machines have light curtains which stick out here on both sides. Uh, the downside of that is obviously when an operator has a small piece and he's trying to hang on to it over here, he's in danger of or in the light barrier which would then stop the machine where he would have to actually be out here to bend the material with a safety laser the operator can be very close operating and you know some of these smaller brackets that uh, people get into you got to be very close to it. Uh, you'll see a very nice aesthetics on the machine some of the nice features uh, like the door panels these are all made out of Lexan uh, which is uh, 
when you hear the doors close, it doesn't sound all teeny like some of the metal doors that are on some of different hydraulic machines. They, they wear well, very nice, uh, fairly lightweight, and th they're durable. This machine that we currently are featuring today has the AD Control 50. Uh, again, this is a modular control as well, window based. So if you were to change the back gauge on this to a six axis, or maybe you wanted to change it to and just add Z1, Z2, uh, you'd be able to update the software in there, put the, uh, the equipment on the machine and start running it uh, in the field. Something that can be done uh, after the fact. Very user-friendly, graphical, very large screen for the operator to see what he's not only programming, if he so chooses to do that at the control, but also as they're bending material, uh, being able to visually see what they're trying to accomplish. All right, uh, I want to show you real quickly how smooth this machine runs. Uh, we'll just bend a little piece of metal. You can see the efficiency and how quick this machine runs. One second. Very simple to walk up, bend it. You notice the transition from the free fall to the mute, bend and retract. It seemed like a very fluid motion. That's very nice about this machine. Uh, one thing you'll notice also is, is until we are bending, it's very quiet. The machine's on. Some of the benefits of an electric press brake is just that. The machine can be running all day and consume very, very little power. The only time it, it actually uses more power is just in the bending process, as you saw. Other than that, it's gonna sound like this all day long. So the, the benefit of how quiet it is, the decibel level, that's been a concern in some shops that shops get very loud and operators should be wearing ear protection. This one, obviously, as you can tell, very quiet. We're gonna go over some of the benefits and features of the AD Control 50. Uh, to do that, we're gonna have Chance Peterson, one of our qualified JMT technicians, walk us through that. Chance. We're gonna go over some of the features and benefits of the AD Touch 50 control. Uh, incredibly easy to use. You got your punches over here, all of ours that we've programmed in so far. Same with your dies here. We programmed our normal JMT four-way die in here. Incredibly easy to use. All of our programs we've saved. Uh, easy to get into them, touch them double or touch them twice. Brings it right up into your piece there. Switches over to this screen. This is where you make all your adjustments. Uh, add all your bends. Um, select all your different tooling you'd like. All your general information about your material, your width, your thickness, the actual type and tinsel strength of material. Uh, this does have a graphical control. We're going to use numerical for the program we're going to build. We're going to go to programs. We're going to select new. Uh, our width of it, we're going to say, is about six inches. The thickness of it, we'll say it's, uh, we'll call it an eighth of an inch. Oop, right there. Uh, mild steel, this comes with aluminum, stainless, and mild steel. You can program more on if you need to. The tinsel strength, it's on a scale of zero or one to 50. Uh, mild steel usually is about 45. Uh, you got your punch here. This is our punch we have programmed in, a PS135. And then our die, we're gonna use our four-way die. And then we're gonna select which one we want. We want the 1.37 uh, V die. Uh, we're gonna make it numerical and external measurements. We're gonna confirm this. This brings us into our piece page to where we do all of our actual bends of what we want. So our width is still six inches. All of our dies and everything have stayed the same. Our back gauge we can change if we need to uh, for different positions. Our uh, angle we want here for this first bend, we're gonna say we're gonna do a 90 degree. And then we're gonna do a flange of two inches, 2.5 inches. Our R is already calculated for us at 2.23. And we're good. Now we're going to end out of that, do another bend, new bend. We got that here. Same thing, all of our material is still the same, our punch, our die. We're going to make a 45 degree angle, 135, and we'll make this one a six inch flange. Calculates our R for us again. Hit enter. We're done there. We'll add one more. And we'll do this one, we'll do another 90. 
for Y1, Y2, our X, we'll do this one at two inches. All right, we got our program. We're gonna save it and we're gonna call it test one. Enter, confirm save. There it is up here at the top. Uh, input bench test one, so we're good. We're gonna go to our production now. Brings it up, we're gonna select bend number one and we're ready to go. We hit the green button, back gauge moves right into position. This is Shane Reynolds with JMT. Thanks for watching our video today. For more information and other products that we offer, please visit our website at jmtusa.com.